I was born on April the 2nd in 1918 on the LH7 Ranch at Barker, Texas. Barker was not a town or a village. It was a large uh, rural community. And um, my mother was named Maud. And they said I looked at like her when I was born, so she would, did not like the Dave, so I turned out to be Maudine. And my father was E.H. Uh, e. Marks, went by E.H. Marks, Emil Henry Marks. And uh, his people came from Germany, Prussia, actually. My mother's people came from England and Scotland. So that's my, that is from whom I am derived. Uh, my father was a rancher. He was, you took one look at him and you knew that he was a rancher. He just was that. And he said that he didn't have much opportunity to study books. So he studied cows. And he went up to his, uh, he had an uncle that lived at uh, Patterson, Texas. And he was orphaned and he was sent up there to live and that's where he learned. He, it, uh, Uncle Muskie, Ruth Muskie was a very good cowman, so he studied it. He, uh, I grew up with these longhorn cattle. I grew up with all kind of just common cattle. And, uh, but the Texas, the Texas cattle is what uh, they used to call the Texas longhorns. Uh, the Texas cattle were special to my father because that's all he had known. And so he kept a special pasture for those cattle. He dealt in uh, pretty much in common cattle. He had, he found, he didn't, I don't think he ever knew the words hybrid vigor or heterosis, but he knew that when you introduced another breed and crossbred that you had an extra uh, amount of vigor that resulted from that from crossbreeding those cattle. So when Brahmas came in, and those were cattle from India, uh, the name Brahma is a, the word taken by the people who brought the cattle in, and they decided they named them after the priests of India. But anyway, he bought. Uh, he had three bulls. He had Atlas, and Dan Moody, and um, Bojan. Those were three Brahma bulls, and he put those on those co common cattle, which were basically the old Texas cattle, and resulted in these uh, calves that had quick growth. So he was very, he was very prosperous. He was a good cowman, and he prospered and his cattle racing, and, and calves were his crop. I grew up there on the ranch, and it took a lot of cowboys, and it took a lot of horses, and it took a lot of work, it took a lot of food, and I was had a part in all of it growing up, and I think that was a wonderful way to grow up. How many cattle, did, how many head of cattle did he have? Our, Biggest dipping count was just a few, just well, maybe a hundred or so less, or two maybe, uh, short of seven thousand. We had to dip. I forgot whether it was ever two or three weeks. You had to dip. And you had to have a clean dip. That's for, against ticks. You had to clean, have a clean dipping, uh, eighteen times before you could, you know, you could just have your herd run free. Of course. The guy next to you, those ticks did not know not to go, you know, cross the fence line. So you had to, if your if your friend neighbor, if his cattle had ticks, well then they were you had to just keep dipping. That was a it was a lot of work. There's a long trench that you dig. It's all concrete, and then you put water in it, and then you put uh, there's some chemicals you put in it. You put a lot of arsenic. I know. I know, I remember you take 16 pounds of arsenic, and that know, I know that's what you start with, but I don't know what else. And so you bring the cattle in, and they go down a chute, and you had a tally. I still have the little uh, the thing that you tally the cattle with, you know, and punch every time one of them goes through. Uh, and they go up on the other end, out and walk up 
a well, they, it's the score. I scored the semen is scored on the other end so they can catch it, get a purchase and get out, and then they sort of drip dry, <laughs> and then you turn them out. Now there is a man called a dip inspector, and he comes, and he takes a bottle and a string, and he takes that water and uh, that dip and vet, and then he they put all the chemicals in, and he uh, tests it just so, and then when it gets to a certain color, you know, I think it was purple. I can still I can still see the, the the jar and the color, you know. But anyway, so that then that would got rid of the cow ticks and tick fever. I've heard stories about when they took cattle up the trail, so to speak, uh, north, that the people in those states hated to see the Texas cattle come through because they would bring in ticks and tick fever. So anyway, it was a big, expensive operation, and this was going on in the 20s and the 30s. Um, the dip, the dipping went on for such a long time, and it went over, slopped over into the years of the Depression. So it was really tough there for people to keep their cattle, work them, because it, you know, you had to go out there and gather the cattle, you had to dip them, and they had to, they had, it took time to do that, and then let them back out and go get some more, and the people, the dairymen, they just had a fit about it. But anyway, that was dipping.